shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you. face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.
So we begin our prayers this evening with the Lord's blessing, recognizing that we don't have to earn our way into his company. We just simply want to be there. We are welcome. We are welcome. So come, Lord Jesus. You too were tired when day was done. You met your friends at evening time. Come, Lord Jesus, join us here. Come, Lord Jesus, you too enjoyed when nights drew on. You told your tales at close of day. Come, Lord Jesus, you are welcome here. Come, Lord Jesus, you kindled faith when lamps were low. You opened scriptures, broke the bread, and shed your light as darkness fell. Come, Lord Jesus, you are welcome here. Meet us here. Our psalm for this evening is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a wild ox. <clears throat> the voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forests bare. And in his temple, all cry, glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. As we come into the Lord's presence this evening, uh, the vista in front of us is of the canal to the north of Ellesmere Port. And if you look closely, you will see that there is both the wonders of creation, the water and the sky reflecting each other, the growing trees and bushes along the sides of the canal, but also at the base of the picture, this pipe. And when I took this little short video this morning, that pipe periodically roared as something passed along it, whether it was a waste or gas or some other substance. It was a testimony as I was filming that within the wonders of God's creation, there is human activity. And somehow we have to pray that the two come together in harmony. More often than not, human activity means damage to the environment. More often than not, human activity um, helps some but exploits others. But in God's economy, human activity is part of the good creation. And we need to learn what it means to be workers in God's world and servants in God's kingdom. And so a word from scripture that looks forward to the time when everything is renewed, everything is whole, and everything is in harmony. This is a reading from Revelation chapter 22. Then the angel showed me a river with the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the centre of the main street. On each side of the river grew a tree of life bearing twelve crops of fruit, with a fresh crop each month. The leaves were used for medicine to heal the nations. No longer will there be a curse upon anything. 
for the throne of God and of the Lamb will be there, and his servants will worship him. And they will see his face, and his name will be written on their foreheads, and there will be no night there, no need for lamps or sun, for the Lord God will shine on them, and they will reign for ever and ever. Then the angel said to me, Everything you have heard and seen is trustworthy and true. The Lord God, who inspires his prophets, has sent his angels to tell his servants what will happen soon. Look, says the Lord, I am coming soon. Blessed are those who obey the words of prophecy written in this book. Before we get to our intercessions, therefore, let's spend some time saying thank you. Saying thank you to God for his many blessings. Saying thank you to God for the fact that we are part of this coming kingdom, that the future described in these verses is ours. And in the light of that glorious future, let's give thanks for the present. Can I invite you now to just share your prayers of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for our churches. And thank you, Lord, that we have the privilege of reopening this weekend. Thank you, Lord, for the freedoms we enjoy in this country to be followers of Jesus. Thank you for food and for shelter. Thank you for your loving acceptance of each one of us despite our many shortcomings and failures. Thank you for the beauty around us, even in an industrial town like Ellesmere Port. Thank you for the promise of the coming kingdom and that in the end all things will be well. And thank you, Lord, that the first person to turn up to any prayer meeting is you. Before we make the effort or create the space or think we're sacrificing the time to be in your presence, you are already there. Before the minister opens up the prayer room, <clears throat> before the leader goes online, you are there, eagerly awaiting the intercessions and the prayers of your people. Lord, we don't ask you to draw near. You're already here. We do pray that we will draw near to you and that we will have the confidence to offer you our prayers. 
Father, looking at the pipe at the bottom of the picture, may we tonight be channels of prayer for the sake of our communities and of our world. And may we lift our eyes from our prayers to see the glorious kingdom that you have already inaugurated in Christ and are bringing to pass in the lives of the peoples of the world. So let us pray. And I say the words, Lord, in your mercy, the response is, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When Jesus taught about the kingdom, he would say that the kingdom is coming in the human hearts that are, are responding to it. He would say that the kingdom, though it involves creation, depends on the human race being saved. So in our prayers tonight, we think about people. People we know, people who are remote from us but who influence our lives, people in the news, people in the public eye, people we like, people we don't like. So we're going to say our prayers tonight for those who need to be remembered before God for whatever reason. So let us say a prayer for those who need to be remembered tonight. We begin by praying for those who have made the news headlines today because of what they've done or said or because of what they haven't done. Let's lift to God those who are in the news for one reason or another. Father, I pray for Donald Trump floundering in his presidency but unwilling to ask for help. I pray for Boris Johnson and his cabinet facing a very unprecedented set of circumstances and needing your guidance and advice and wisdom to know how to lead the country through this crisis. Well, we pray for travel companies facing the unprecedented quarantine regulations. And we pray for those who have lost their holidays because of them. We pray for Tony Fauci and his marginalization by the administration in America. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray for those who've been brought to our attention through a memory, through a meeting, or a conversation through an anniversary, or just because they popped into our minds. Lord, I pray for Jill and for her family and for the arrangements we made this weekend. I pray for Steph, awaiting the birth of her baby and praying that it will happen in the way that she wants it to. I give you thanks for Adrian Maguire and for his hard work in preparing the church for our return to worship this coming Sunday. Pray for our friend Chris Carter, whose husband Ron is nearing the end of his life.
I pray for Sarah Tilling, still mourning the loss of her husband. <coughs> I pray for Emma, RPA, and give thanks for her amazing contribution to the life of our parish over these last three and a half months. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in hospital, who are going through treatment, who are in care, who are struggling with mental health issues, or who find themselves in a place or a situation which is strange and threatening to them. Let's pray for those who need the Lord's healing in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, I pray for Amy. And thank you for her courage. I pray for Neville. John and Doreen. Pray for Dave O'Brien. Pray for Caroline. And your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations. And your family, and your Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are waiting for a decision for a change, for news, for opportunity, for the door to open up to a future that they currently don't know, but which they are longing for. We pray for those who are awaiting the decisions of others or who need to make decisions themselves. But we pray for our diocesan ordinance, including Debbie, who have begun their ministries but are awaiting their ordination. We pray that when, that when that day comes, however it is celebrated, that it will be truly glorious and wonderful. We pray for those awaiting decisions about furlough employment, re-employment, for our youngsters waiting for their GCSE results, for our primary school kids waiting for their placements in high school. We pray for our schools, not really sure what's going to happen in September. Pray for businesses as the furlough payments come to an end at the end of this month and as they have to re-engage with the normal systems of employment, national insurance, PAYE. We pray for decisions that have to be made concerning future commerce, business, industry and employment. Lord, in your mercy our prayer 
And we pray for the majority of our community, including many whom we know, who need to forget the God they don't believe in and meet the God who believes in them. We pray for our five a day. We pray for our neighbours. We pray for our country and its communities. Lord, I pray for my brother Stuart and pray that he will meet with you and not meet you with arguments. I pray for Steve, my barber at the top of Vale Road. A lovely man who just doesn't get religion. Pray for Ted and Doris, our next door neighbours. Lord, I pray for the partners of many in our church who don't believe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we believe that you hear our prayer and you will be faithful to your promise to answer us. After all, you're the first person to turn up at any prayer meeting. So when our eyes open again, when we move from this time of prayer into the ordinary activities of our lives, may we do so not to end our devotions, but to expect your kingdom to come, to live in the light of the vision shared in revelation about a future that is beyond our expectation our imagination even our hope may we live as those who have been prepared are preparing for a future that christ has won for us in the past so may the lord bless you may the lord keep you May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. Lord, bless us in our sleep with rest, in our dreams with vision, in our waking with a calm mind, in our soul with the friendship of the Holy Spirit, this night and evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me in prayer tonight. We reconvene in terms of our prayer meeting tomorrow at 9.30. Please do join us then. And between then and between now and then, may the presence of God not depart from you. And may you always be aware that you are part of his kingdom. I'm just going to let the music play out for a few minutes. Feel free to leave when you're ready or just enjoy this wonderful blessing prayer. Amen.